What's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Food Community Podcast. It's your boy Rich Homie Juan. I got my host with me right here as usual, LA Icon. What up? And today we got a real special guest in the building, one of the goats. No, Cap! Disaster. Everybody give him a warm welcome. There he is, there he is. That sounded Who's... like a lot of people clapped right now. That shit's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's only a couple of us here. So, how was the traffic? <laughs> the first question, uh, right off the bat. Man, I fucking hate L.A. traffic, man. I, I really was one of the type of dudes that used to see, like, all the conspiracy theories about, like, <laughs> eliminating people and how they're trying to do population control. Agenda 21. And, yeah, and I would be mad at that shit, like, fuck this population control shit. Man, I changed my mind. Man, wipe all these motherfuckers <laughs> out, dog. There's too much people out here, bro. I can't f- f- make it anywhere anymore. What about the parking? Parking is garbage, especially where y'all at. You got me over here parking over piss stains and 40 tents down the street. You know what I'm saying? You love <laughs> this it. Shit, this shit is crazy, man. They recognize it. But you. the traffic is the worst thing ever in LA. I don't think I'll ever get over this shit, man. We just can't get anywhere on time, man. Don't ask anybody from out here to be anywhere on time, bro. Tell you know, anything takes an hour to get to, bro. So what's your weight loss secret? I need to know. Rip tearing your ACL during a fucking football game. Mm. You were playing fucking football? Yes. Well, sorry. Football. What was your position? Left out? No, I'm a striker. <laughs> left out, <laughs> left, stri- left striker. Uh, yeah, I'm a striker, man, and just kind of, I fucking twisted my shit in a crazy position, bro. I, I was bedridden for like three, four, five months. That's why I stopped going to the no jumper shit too in the beginning. Like I just kind of couldn't come back. Well, I stopped for other reasons, but then I was gonna come back, and then I was bedridden, and then like kind of be real with you. Even when I got better, the shit depressed the f- out of me, and I just my eating routine got. F- up and I stopped working out, but I'm getting my shit back. I was gonna say I'm not gonna cap. I'm used to seeing you kind of buff. Yeah, I know. Pause. I'm gonna get my shit back, bro. Don't trip. It's just like my leg has been gone, bro. I can't really do nothing no more. And all my workout routines, which were mainly cardio, which like kept me like super in shape because I just played soccer all day, mm-hmm. and I can't do that no more. And it made it to where like because that shit would make me want to lift weights. So like then I just. I'm, I'm too lazy to lift weights. I just been smoking weed, kind of. But I'm getting <laughs> back into it, man. Yeah, I just kind of been smoking. Nah, don't feel bad. I'm a f- fat lard because I haven't been able to make it to the f- gym and work out. So. You just gotta find a sport you love doing. Don't you like any sports? No. What's the sport that you watch? None. Fat people always watch sports. He loves watching watch boxing. Sports. All I do is f- grind it out. You know, f- no sports. You no. Well, boxing, fool. Well, boxing. You like boxing. Okay. So, <laughs> see, you enjoy that. Like, that's like, what well, you gotta your do. Ass to the f- Boxing gym? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to just stay in that mood where, like, you're chasing that f- feeling of what you like doing. Because for me, bro, the ball, like, and that, and it, <laughs> it's just one ball. It's, it's a different, it's, it's, it's a different thing, like the soccer ball than the basketball to, to the, to the American, to the average American, right? Like, we come from different parts of the world that that ball means something to us, you Facts. know what I mean? And like, it's 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 like a goal, like no pun intended, that you always are trying to reach. And so you're literally a f- avid soccer player. Yeah, like I'm f- insane about it. Like it's not even a joke. So I don't you do were bedridden a- playing f- FIFA 20, whatever. F- here. In the beginning, but the problem is I couldn't do it no more because I'm so obsessed with this. Sh- it depresses me just f- seeing my. Like, I can't even watch it right now. As just much make as a I love player. it, I can't. F- <laughs> watch it anymore like the man city in manchester just did have their final i couldn't even watch it because i'm gonna sit there and be depressed as f- nah you should have did this and no nah, i should be up there and like i just i'm kind of just focusing on the rest. so with your aco like you can't come back from that i could but like i need to do this crazy surgery extensive and then like it's like it's really crazy but i mean i'm 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 healing it slowly, dog. Like and mm. I'm gonna get some stem cells and I'm gonna get some shit so I can get up there. Shout mm. out to the Back stem cells. Right? Yeah, I mean it's uh, I've heard from a lot of people that that kind of works, bro. So no, it absolutely works. I heard. Yeah, yeah they said like, that on Joe Rogan. Absolutely. And the thing is, anything that the government don't sponsor. Hello. Anything that the government tells you, hey, we don't really know if we're sure about that shit. But the FDA just passed you this cancer chocolate bar and we definitely think that it's yeah. you know it's just like bro like i know something's here whenever the government goes don't do it it's like oh yeah that's because this is probably a shortcut and you're gonna take this once or twice and you're gonna heal right away now, don't take what i'm saying like for sure sometimes the government tells you about not taking poison and shit, but i'm saying in these situations <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't go ingest some fucking poison now but just in these situations like it's like dog you hiding money Mm. Like, and you got to look at it like that. Like, hold on. Why are you guys not covering this with your insurance companies? Oh, because this is like a one, two time 
treatment thing or maybe three times at the most but the other shit that y'all got people doing from physical therapy to all these surgeries and follow-ups and extra shit is just making y'all all types of money yeah, yeah and yeah. keeping me for all for the long run you know what i mean so <laughs> that's how i see it and i'm seeing a lot of athletes heal themselves with that shit and their testimonies don't go too far on the internet but you see them they're mm. there they're just not being promoted and broadcasted Absolutely like the not. medical shit. are you still big on the conspiracies or not of course i am bro i know about everything on the, i know about the whole world bro. what's one that you truly believe like without I mean, dog let me if y'all want to open this, this would be a can of worms because I'm I was, no, go I, was in. I was getting ready to f Joe the f up in. one day because I'm keeping this shit. So when I see him, I'm a f his whole Let's entire brain up. Go but, I mean, in. We could talk about some. Shit. I, I do consider that I feel like I know exactly what the fuck is happening about everything. Like maybe I have some things misconstrued. As far as like life being a simulation, what do you want, and, to, yo, do you want to know? I I, I guarantee just one that you, in I your, guarantee you we live in a simulation. Just one I, one. In I your, would put every f dollar anything I would. Bet anything that we live in a simulation. So then we're all main characters and like those bombs are, are NPCs? No, that we're all trapped on Earth. And these are all this shit, but this is a mathematically encoded system that mm. we're living in. There's, there's, an actual, there's an actual system to this. And anything that has systems doesn't happen by chance. And systems don't just form by themselves. So you got a respiratory system. Oh. You got a nervous system. You got a solar system. You got all these systems. These are things that are in place that are been designed by some form of architect. Now, I don't know if there's one God or whatever people want to believe in, and that's fine. I'm a I'm a I'm definitely um I'm a av avid believer in 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 creationist in the creationist you know what I mean like creationism mm. so I I I believe that there's something out there don't know what it is that is programming everything like the creator pretty much everything is coded encoded the, the, like your DNA has like crazy amounts of information and it. it's not just we we we're, we're slowly figuring out what the we live in but this right here is way beyond what we could comprehend there's like a mathematical equation to all of this there's, mm. there's what do you think about the technological revolution we've gone through in the last century we went from f cavemen to f stones to fucking yeah it's exponential growth to the the AI. F yeah the f ai about to ruin our lives it's it exponential growth by this by this path we definitely be the f out of here in the next 30 years mm. uh, and in the route we're going in the next 30 years everything will be f up and changed like there's going to be a lot of that happens that really destroys society by who by technology yeah technology is going to destroy ha like lives how, how is that going to happen i'll explain it to people since they never really think about it they're like oh yeah i'll destroy lives yeah i'm explaining <laughs> you how it's going to destroy your entire life are you ready Let's everybody's a liar everybody has secrets facts everybody mm. fucking, fucking steals fucking pockets money cheats does sh everybody does this shit right but what's happened in the last 20, 30 years is everybody has had these phones and had these secret like ways of covering all these things. You know, it's kind of like how we found out the elites are the whole planet up once the Internet came. Now, once it goes to this next level where there's no more privacy, bro, what mm. do you think is going to happen when everybody knows everything you've ever said and, and are thinking and want to do and have done? And it's right there. You're wearing it on your sleeve now, like anything you've done. Like this is what you're going to realize that passwords on phones all this shit is about to become obsolete and how soon it probably be way quicker than you think it's a it takes like a quantum pc that's it's there's a computer called a quantum pc and it could calculate in different it's like qubits we calculate in bits it's qubits it's like a whole i don't have to get into that but the point is is that passwords don't mean anything anymore it could figure out a password right away because it could calculate every single password it could possibly be within a nanosecond so these <laughs> right, things right, yeah. could, could bypass passwords right so like this ai that's coming is about to bypass everything and people will be able to access this and you could bypass anything which means the stock market you can manipulate it the way you want you could turn off planes make them fall from the sky mm. and anything is now you understand like so the u.s no bypass that's happening and once ai takes over we're really about to be like completely f like everybody's lives are going to be out there like everybody's going to know your secrets bro anything that you think think you hid from people before they're going to know about it bro you're uh -huh. there's going to be an exposure coming in the next 10 20 years who f knows how long but everyone's going to get exposed and then from there it's going to turn into a different society where everything is like this we're doing this for the safety no more lying no more stealing no more cheating zero crime rate zero uh. murder zero everything everything is perfect you know that's tight and this is no it's really not hell no don't be scared of the truth fellas it's really not imagine the jungle if no lions ate anything mm. that's different
And then, then what happens? You have an influx of rabbits that eat up all the crops. And then what happens? There's no more crops. So what do you think eat. that'll lead to? If we, we Ecosystem, bro, this is life. Death, cycle, everything. Anyone that interferes with that is f***ing shit up. Talk to me about f***ing God and death. Mm. Me and my boy right here have an issue with that. I, I, I have an issue with death. I, I, I definitely don't like it. Don't like talking about it. I don't understand it. And but I do. That's tight. I do get like I just don't accept it. Like I, I also to the point where I'm strong enough mentally, like other people, to accept it as a part of life. I haven't yet. Me either. I, I understand it. Is, I'll have an anxiety but I, attack. Me personally. Me neither. Just because life is so precious. You feel me? That means you're, you're you're a person who loves life and you're a passionate person. And, and, and that's okay. I'm like, I'll have an anxiety. I'm probably going to have one talking about it right now. <laughs> You're not going to notice, but if I take off my jacket, just know I'm deep into it. Well, thinking about how short life is, bro, and how finite this shit is, it really fucking sucks for us. And there, you know, I always wonder, like, we're, we're, we're lied to, like, about, about the length of life. You know, I always mm. wonder if there's this place, like, like a piece of land that we don't know about, where all people with all the money live and there's just no there diseases is a conspiracy there. About that. there's no diseases there's nothing there and everybody's living long 100 year 200 year lives healthily and they're not getting old like us and I saw wrinkly theory. and fucking their hair turns gray in their 30s and 40s that's not happening this is all a construct of we're being pushed to our deaths so this that's why i don't accept it because i feel like everybody dies before they're supposed to nowadays mm. you know what i mean so I don't accept it, but I accept it as a part of life, yes. But the way it is for us as human beings, there's something wrong with that. And we're getting killed off by our own people, like our own. We, we, we have a misunderstanding with what this whole shit is, life and death. We don't understand any of it. As human beings, like we're in a f***ed up state right now, bro, where we don't know what's going to happen. The whole world's on edge. We're in multiple recessions at the same time. Everyone's mm -hmm. trying to act like shit's cool, and it's really not. And above all, we got a f Trump and Biden most likely running again against each other. You know, we don't know what's happening with this politi politics shit right now, like indictments and all this shit. I don't really pay attention to that. Shit. I just know every time the elections come, I'm going to go ham. So like in 2024, bro, who knows what they got planned for us? Civil wars. Think about it, bro. Like if Trump wins or they put Trump in jail, we'll probably have a civil war. Who gives a fuck at this point? Like they've pushed us to the point where... They've turned everybody against each other. They've got all the money. Everyone got ripped off. You want my opinion? There is no conspiracy theories. Everything is bullshit. There's just somebody making money and there's somebody not. And you're the customer. We're all the customers in everything. Whether it's jabs, vaccines, there's no, there's no conspiracy theory. This shit is a money maker. You're a customer that's buying something you don't need. Mm. Did you get the vaccine? That's it. Of course not. You're buying something. But you did don't you not need. get it because it was a money grab, or do you feel like they put something in there? Well, if it's a money grab. Then what would be in it? Why would why would it be a money grab if it was helping you? If it's helping you, it's clearly not a money grab because the the help would cost money. You know, mm. real help costs money. If it's for free, mm. because they're making money off the companies, it's for free for you. So you're being played as a middleman in a scheme where trillions of dollars are passing through, and you're not touching a single cent cent of it. If anything, I'm not like these conspiracy theorists that believe that, like, oh, all this shit. I believe Americans have the right to get whatever the f*** they want. So I'm not anti-vaccine. Not at all. Mm. You want to get vaccinated? You're an American. <laughs> if you want to drink a cup of piss, I'm not going to stop you. It's your right mm -hmm. as an American to do that. As any citizen of any part of the world, I feel like you should have a right to do whatever the f*** you want. Not just an American thing. So I should be getting money with you. <laughs> that's the way i look at it because like either we're gonna sit back yeah it's fucked up people are being coerced into some shit and a lot of people like are getting hurt from shit, you know what i mean because it's a one size fits all model how the fuck do you do that with human beings that are not the same uh, let me ask you just a, a very basic question if you know a person could get allergic from peanuts simple thing that everybody else could eat and this person eats it and they fucking get destroyed, then why would you assume there's a one-size-fits-all model for something like fucking chemical substances and a cocktail of shit? Mm -hmm. You obviously now have raised your probability of it not matching with a person. So my whole thing is there's no way it's a one-size-fits-all model. So the whole mandating for everybody to take is suicidal. Mm, you get yeah, what I'm saying? Where you're going. But there is probably people that need shit like that. They need vaccines. Don't know what was in that vaccine specifically. You're not going to speak on it. But I'm saying... 
if you're if you're if you're autoimmune deficient, if you're deficient mm -hmm. and you're like 80 years old and your immune system doesn't work anymore, that is like steroids for you. You take it every six months, you're protected. But that's the whole thing. This is why I'm explaining to you. It's like steroids. They're making young people take it and they're like booster, booster, booster. Well, the reason why they're saying that is, again, it's like a drug or like steroids. You take it for a little while and then it you need to take more of it and like you need to keep coming back it's like anything like um it, you become addicted to it your body gets used to it this is the human body it adapts to whatever it's taken it's giving you an artificial immune system if you're young and healthy you don't need it but if you're old and you don't have one and the slightest cold could kill you then you might need an artificial immune system and that's the whole point you know what i mean so that's how i feel about that should people be told to take it no bro you said that's your decision to go and and get it now would i ever take that shit? i'd probably put a gun to your head before i do that and i'd probably go to jail for a really long time before i would like how i seen like the chinese people trying to but i have a needle phobia though oh. so that's another thing but even it's still the, the shit that's in it too like you're not about to put something in me like that you know what i mean but like i have a needle phobia i, I have a problem drawing blood dog like drawing blood bro i'm about to fight everybody in the room i just i, I can't a needle going through me it's like it's a mental thing you know what i mean my boy cannot bleed you know <laughs> we all bleed but you know what i mean here here's the thing like i i just i don't believe i could ever be coerced into some shit like that and if it ever came down to it i would be down to die mm. because at least they'll be at my hands and not just like crumbling like a fucking, like a loser helplessly you know what i mean mm. rather just go out just fighting fuck do you feel like the people who took the vaccine is going to come bite, bite them back in the ass in maybe, the future? Maybe not. I don't believe that every person is going to be affected from it like that. Mm. But I do believe a lot of people will be. Mm. I mean, dog, <laughs> we're human beings that are different. Every one of us has a different fingerprint, dog. Yeah. We have different systems. Our works different. We react. To, some people probably ate that vaccine like it was like a breakfast burrito. You know what I mean? And some people probably got sick as fuck, like some people I know. Facts. Mm. And that's it. That's what. That's how I feel about that. And every conspiracy that's being pushed is real. There's no such thing as conspiracies. It's all real, and somebody's making money off you, and you're just arguing about it. Mm. <laughs> and somebody's making money without you. You feel like there'll ever be a point in your lifetime when everybody wakes up to the truth of what's really going on of course on Earth? Because then you wouldn't have customers. Mm. You're basically saying, I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, obviously. Maybe not in your lifetime, but down the future. Find out what the dealer is getting the shit for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like you're still gonna be a. But customer. then there's a fucking herd of fucking people that do not give a. Fucking need it? I need it now. Thanks. It's like that with everything, bro. Mm -hmm. Everything. There's nothing that it's not like that with your medical system, your your educational system, whatever it is, bro. You're being your customer. Your stock ID number. That's the big conspiracy theory that you came to this fucking planet as cattle, and you're owned by the government and your stock ID number. And this is why murder is illegal. It's not because the government cares about you, dog. Government could give a fuck less if you die. That's why they'll kill you if they have to. They'll, okay, if we decide to kill you, it's okay. Ain't nobody going to hell on our end. But if you do it, you're a bad person and you need to be jailed forever. It's not because of any morals. It's because you just removed from the government. Cattle. But how much money did you just remove from the government? By killing one person. Mm. Think about it. Exponentially count it. You just, uh, you just asked me how technology moved in 100 years. How much is a person going to make in their lifetime, depending on who they are? And how much are they going to spend, not just make, what they spend on? We're talking about the pulling of your trigger is removing millions of dollars from the government's pocket. Do you understand that? Mm. As right. soon as you pull it, bam, you just stole millions of dollars from the government for the next couple of years and prosperity of the country. Mm. That's why you're going to jail. Not because of any other reason. Because once... It's deep. Hold on. Because once you become institutionalized and no longer of use to the system killing you becomes okay doesn't it because at this point they're like he's not gonna make any more money he's not out here feeding the economy but nobody's saying it but that's really what it is it's a useless cattle now at that point so they could put you down and let you die in jail don't give a fuck about your conditions that's why we have such a prison industrial complex is you know one of the biggest catalyst for this fucking bullshit that mm. we're talking about it's another form of oh we're doing this to take the criminals off the streets to make you feel better you know what i mean <laughs> that type of shit but really it's 
we're filling these things up because we're getting money. You know what I mean? It's always that. I, I, you could name one, name a thing, bro, that you think is a conspiracy theory or anything. I'll show you where the money is, and I'll show you where it's not. And it's definitely in your pocket. It's definitely not in your pocket. And that's why you're the one arguing about that. I really hate the like the people that are like, it's a conspiracy, and they're, they're just like bent on people knowing the truth. And I don't even talk about that unless people ask me. Mm -hmm. Because if fuckers want to, I don't believe that people deserve to know the truth. So I'm not one of these guys that's out there to save the world. I'm not. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I know the world doesn't need saving. You know what I mean? The, there's people that need saving, and there's people that are willing to listen, and the minds that are open enough to hear it will be talked to. And the ones that aren't are a waste of time, and you don't talk to them. That's why you'll never catch me arguing with somebody that doesn't believe something. I'll just respect it. Mm. Oh, you don't believe that? Cool, I respect you. It's your opinion. I'm not about to convince you shit, ever. If the moon is landing was real or not, or whatever, the million conspiracy theories. Is the earth flat? No, but. But. This, this is, I like this question the most. Because I looked into that shit so heavy. Like when I say heavy, like I heavy flipped it inside out to know like exactly. You know Admiral bro, Bird's it birthday. Goes back, bro, the, mm -hmm. the dome system and all this. And even up into the 1700s, like this is like a common thing with a lot of the cultures, how the earth was shaped and what's really on it. So this is what I think. Remember how I was saying earlier, there's a land... That Not people, here, where yeah. people are live like longer. The ice wall or what? Ice wall theory. I don't know about. Okay, maybe there's an ice wall. Maybe. We don't. Okay, yeah, 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 But what I think is this, because like, so this is what I know for a fact. I'm not gonna say what I speculate. What I know for a fact, that's a fact, is NASA lies about everything, right? Okay. Hmm. I know for a fact that the globe that they showed us is not a picture of Earth. It's a amalgamation <laughs> of pictures that are condensed to show you a picture. I know that the map is actually false as. Africa is way smaller than it really is on the map and all the countries are the wrong f sizes, right? And this is a fact. Any historian will tell you that or anybody that knows about geography that teaches in school will tell you, yeah, this shit's f***ed up. All the, 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 the <laughs> countries are just not on. There's something wrong. There's, there, you're doing something with the land. You're hiding something. There's something f wrong. So what I think is that Earth, it's not that it's shaped different, is that it's most likely way bigger than what we're being told or it's just a infinite plane and we're not even living on a planet we're just in some like like some some digital simulation there's really all that shit's a lie everything they're telling you bro nasa's hollywood bro nasa's hmm. hollywood anybody who thinks you've otherwise been, is hilarious remember we were talking about money world, though. remember what we were talking about money back to nasa <clears throat> You and your friends own a fucking space shuttle company or whatever <laughs> called NASA, right? And you have a hedge fund, or we could say the, fucking, uh, the banks or the government or whatever, okay? Ready to fucking give you all this money, right? You're going to get it from the taxpayers, but you're using the government to do it, right? So you have the ability to leverage all this money and it comes to your table, but you need to know how you're going to be able to spend this money and funnel it on some laundering shit right so you're like damn what are programs we could convince people that are the biggest programs that are going to take the biggest chunks because we're going to have these little other programs we're going to lie about helping people for cancer and all this other shit but the space program is a program they could charge billions of dollars for and charge you for it so you are paying tax money for a program that essentially doesn't exist mm -hmm. it's basically black market black budget funneling money it's a wormhole another way to just lie to us bro they take our money to oh we're gonna um we're working on fresh water for this kind of fish up north because it's endangered and all this bullshit half a million dollars for the you know when they pass these stimulus packages you see the democrats always go the republicans are trying to take this from you and they never tell you that they're all full of shit and they're all stashing these packages that they try to pass to us with these things and we don't even get to vote on them right they get the, you look at it and it's like a billion for like for <laughs> researching some insect in a rainforest you know and it's yeah. like dog these guys are stealing money none of this is real they could easily have the scientists part of the same establishments write a letter and be like, yo, we think this is an endangered species. And through each other, they give them funding. And they go, we have an endangered species. And now we need money from you guys. And it's all a fucking game. Mm. And this is what's happening in everything, bro. There's nothing you can name where I won't show you where the money is. The goal is for us to get the 
kind of being customers and becoming drug dealers. It's not about exposing. <laughs> it's not about like, you know what I'm saying? Fighting evil or fighting the good. Who knows if it's really like an evil, like, you know, the whole Illuminati shit and how like demons control the world. It just might be some really ugly people that got a lot of money. Mm. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I They're just really cool. ugly and they got a lot of money. So they like kind of are like demonic and they have no, <laughs> they have no, you know, or they believe in Satan and shit or whatever it is. I look at all that stuff like random ideologies. I don't even look at it like that. The fucking main thing that people are worshiping is money. Facts. <laughs> like, like, like ultra facts. Like everyone wants to go back. Like if you want a picture of the devil, then just wave some money. Then fuck a pitchfork and the fucking horns wow. and all these things that you imagine. It's really just the money because that dollar in your pocket is murdering people to get to your pocket, bro. Murder. People are getting wiped out for it to get to your pocket, bro. Damn, That's dude. the reality of the world that we live in, in this fucking fucked up simulation where you need credits to move. You are out of credits. Icon, you are stuck. <laughs> 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 like, bro, that might, you know, you watch Black Mirror? Yeah, I know yeah, some yeah. of you have seen some. No, Black absolutely, Mirror, you know, at least episodes. some. It's just like a lot of that feels like what life could possibly end up being like. Mm. Crazy as it's sad. it's scary because people look at it like you're doing too much. Remember but then we me see when we go underground. <laughs> when we go underground, remember me. I got you. Oh man. Hey, do you feel like go. sometimes movies and TV shows kind of give you clues? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. They're desensitizing. The predictive programming. Would right? you That's say that they're desensitizing mm. us to what could there's possibly that, be? And there's a possibility. So I've uh, I've obviously outweighed the options of what it is. <laughs> so a lot of people think like Hollywood is putting subliminals and shit because like they're showing you that they're evil or they're trying to get rid of their karma maybe it could be that but i think i think what's happening is somebody out there is realizing that this form of communication is the strongest form of communication having the ability to 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 put out movies and shit mm -hmm. so subliminally controlling that you know would be like the right thing to do i don't know what do you think what do you mean the right thing to do? Like kind of explain to them what's going on so they don't feel as bad to, as to what they're doing? That it, it's most easy for them to put stuff visually through movies in Hollywood. It's basically like this. What I'm try trying to say is like if somebody wanted to, to do the right thing, like to get a message across, they would use that vessel as a way to put subliminal messages to wake you up. To the masses. Yeah, mm. it's more, it's it's less of them showing their evil side, but it could be like a random writer that's like, yo, I'm going to throw this in there. Uh. Like, why do people not look at it like that? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, if I was writing a script, I might leave an Easter egg in there <laughs> that nobody <laughs> finds, you know what I mean? Till later. And like, they it's see, there. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like you never know what they're using, but that's the, st look, Hollywood was how we took over the whole world. Facts. America destroyed the whole entire planet with an atom bomb, but really they did it with Hollywood. Everyone is Wait, still- Wait, explain. I'm explain. Everyone thought the atom bomb was America's biggest weapon because obviously human beings are perplexed by something like that, especially when an atom bomb appears out of nowhere for the first time. Now we're used to the idea of an explosion that big. Back in the day, the idea of something existing in a world like this was unheard of. So it was like a really scary thing, you know? But you see, Hollywood is a more terrifying thing because what they were able to do was to the whole entire world for the next 60, 70 years to come. And what they did first was they destroyed Russia. You know, and how did they do it? Through the race to arms. So the race to arms was was basically us and Russia to see who's going to become the world superpower. And it was that race for them. That's the that's the, the, the famous, you know, war that we had with them at the time. And that's Cold War or whatever. It's the war that wasn't with rockets, but it was with us building crazier shit. And America was trying to get to space, and so was Russia. You know what I mean? Now, we tried nine times to get to space, all right, before we went to space, right? It was nine tries before that. So did all we go to space? All nine tries, all nine tries, the shuttle that we sent exploded right on the base. It never even f***ed it off. It was the most pathetic failure of a f***ing thing mm -hmm. to the point where they didn't televise any of it because it was embarrassing, and a lot of people died. A lot of people. Of course. So out of nowhere... Walt Disney appears and basically Walt Disney, who we know is connected to a lot of bullshit, appears out of nowhere and goes, we're going to space, kids. And he has a space shuttle and he's like, we're funding the space mission. So suddenly Walt Disney's on board with NASA. And now like, how the f did Walt Disney get to NASA, right? Like, it's like, he got to kind of put two and two together there. They're in the fucking music, the, the film business, you know what I mean? So like, basically, 
Walt Disney starts pushing it and Kennedy basically comes out and says, we're going to space. We figured it out. So like out of nowhere, suddenly from them not even being able to literally lift off with no televised shit. There was no, there was no filming allowed because there was massacres happening and it's too much of a risk. And it was embarrassing for a country like America to have these exploding failures all over the world. Suddenly they're like, we figured it out and like, we're going to televise it to the whole world. So already that to me is like a red flag. Like, you know, now it's orchestrated. You know, now they're not afraid that some shit's going to blow up. And somehow from there's no progress from actually going through our stratosphere. There's no there's no understanding of leaving our atmosphere. They've never had it before. Now, suddenly they're going to do it from the first time and everything's going to work out. You know, what I mean, and that's how it started. They fucking aired the shit and they made every person on Earth watch it. It's the most televised event in the history of mankind still to this day was the us rock. making yeah. yeah wow they made every person on earth watch it like everyone was in their house watching every um different uh time Everywhere. zone every different time zone people had it set up to watch it the whole earth was actually kind of unified on this it was almost like a world cup thing like watching brazil versus france in the world cup type of shit the whole world was just tuned in no matter what it was and they succeeded on camera immediately america's excellence and we made it now first of all there's no trip there's just the takeoff and there's just the landing and the first thing that just tells you that there's no f trip bro where's the f for purposes for study for where where's us breaking breaking our atmosphere could i see what that looked like mm. could i see what it looked like you traveling to the moon stars in the background could i see rocks floating in space could i look could we just look out the window see what the journey looked like could we get some footage as you guys are just racing through the void you know what i mean there's none of that not for scientific purposes not for public purposes mm. not for anything right there's just the military telling you that they lost all of it is that right. what they said that it's lost yeah because it's called um the data I'm I'm a really heavy researcher, bro. I've kind of compartmental compartmentalized this part of my brain so I could f work on my shit because I don't have time for this shit. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking have time for this shit icon. But it's called the something data. I forgot what it was called. The something record data or whatever. Um, yeah, it's just lost of the sauce. Bottom the, line. The, the tele the, the telemetric or the data. The all right that data um, telemetry data. Boy, mm -hmm. the telemetry <laughs> data. That is everything from the trip. And it's gone. Gone. Mm. They don't have it. Then they have, on the moon, a camera set up in place yeah. to watch it land <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> perfectly, right? I never thought about that. <laughs> There's just a million things yeah. for me. There's a million things for me that are obvious, from like no dust fucking flying off the ground when it lands to just how retarded the whole thing was, right? It's just the whole Hollywood thing bro mm. and anyone with half a brain could tell you that um i don't know i shouldn't go as far as say that it's a very good they did a very good job manipulating everyone i believed it too for the longest um so the fucking thing takes off and it leaves and the camera stays behind too so it's like this amazing like leaving we're leaving and america and then there's the phone call the phone call was between nixon because i think it was right before because Kennedy announced we were going to space, and then Nixon was there when it happened. Pretty sure, right? I could have a little shit conflated. But Nixon picks up the phone. I know it's him. And he goes, Neil Armstrong is on the moon calling him, right? Like in, On the moon. Right. So, so this is at a time where, bros, there was no, there was cell, no cell phones. cellular phone. We didn't, like, you had in like house phones right and we know what house phones sound like <laughs> so this guy nixon picks up and call and talks to some guy on a house phone right don't know maybe it was you know, armstrong but literally the phone call you could hear it in the living room right next to him like the there's no delay bro and it's crystal clear there's no delay the phone call is insane when you hear it you know like bro how are you talking to the moon right now yeah, yeah, yeah. like it just sounds like you're talking to your homie down the street bro like come the f on bro like we can't even <laughs> talk to the moon right now with the technology we have with the sh bro you go in the mountains a little bit i'm gonna lose you bro like what do you mean dog so the whole phone call is bullshit. <laughs> my reasons why the whole shit was bullshit wasn't because the the flag was straight it's because i'm a human being and i'm a man i know real shit, right when the astronauts walk out of the walk out of the and they come down for their presentation they come down so they could be greeted these guys look depressed 
imagine how hard you would hang your dick if you just got off the moon and the rest of the planet didn't. Like you just came back from the moon, bro. You're God. You, you're beyond the president at this point. You're beyond. There's nobody on earth that could even say anything to you at that point. You've literally transcended man. You're a superhuman. You're a superhero. These guys come down like, hey, we just came from the moon. You know, Neil yeah. Armstrong and all of them, right? They sit down. They look like someone killed their pets. <laughs> it looks like someone killed their dog and cat. Like they're just sitting there like, like this. And they're like, yeah, so we just came back from the moon. <laughs> It's like, bro, there is no way I would be, I would probably have been popping a champagne bottle on some, like, you know how, like, the Formula One drivers do it on top of each other, and they start, <laughs> like, I would have been slapping people with champagne, like, it would have just been popping strippers all the, in, in the middle crazy. of the fucking, uh, in the middle of the briefing room, bro, that shit would have been popping, <laughs> twerking, fucking shit, the homies coming through the door with fucking honey bottles and blowing blunts, bro, we'd have, all of you, to be honest with you, I'm taking a break off being an astronaut. I smoke weed now. Fire me. <laughs> I just went to the moon. Like, you. I'm done. My business on Earth is done at that point. But you can see in all their faces that they didn't go to no moon. They're all mad. They're fidgeting around. They're doing all this shit. So anyways, that's that's my opinion about that. Like, the moon shit is bullshit. I don't know how I got into it. I feel like you never even asked me that, and I just went off into a tangent. Hey, hold up, though. Do you I feel like, like we'll ever get it. to the moon, or do you feel like there's some type of, like, surface? I don't know about Earth. all that. Like, the people that say we can't go there. Mm. I just, I just, there's a chance we did. We just didn't show it. We showed them the fake shit. Because there's some They showed that... us the fake shit. What about vessels recently flying to space? Like, I don't, what space, bro? Like, what are you talking about flying to space? Like, these guys are. That's also a valid point. <sighs> Remember when they put that car in space, like the Tesla or whatever, or some shit, like they put a car in space oh shit! like a couple that. of years ago bro it was so f bullshit like the f mm. the paint on that thing would have f turned into fucking ashes like the whole shit's bullshit they're like oh we had a a, a coating on it like what coating bit like what are you f talking about like the whole entire thing because like, you're saying in order for us to the break sun through our atmosphere that f car bro out there it would have turned into f the way they explain to us science the sun should have fried that f a uh, 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 car into nothing, bro. Every the paint would have been burned off it. Like it was just sitting there. It looked like it was in a studio. This shit's all bullshit. They're always showing us all this shit, and they're showing us these drawings. This is why, like the flat earthers, when they start talking about the earth is flat, like I feel like they're a little bit too much, and they're fucking crazy with that. But like, I don't blame them because, like, bro, they they know these guys are full of shit. What really flat earthers are telling you, like, yo, all this is CGI. That's the only shit I agree with them on. Like, I really agree with them on that because. Dog, you're being shown computer graphics. Ever since you were a kid, every planet, it's a drawing. But we see it's the drawing. moon, though. You can see the moon, but I'm talking about all the other planets and all the other shit. It's a drawing. What's popping? Oh, shit, this guy. What's up? How you doing? It's a drawing. They're showing you drawings, bro. They're giving us cartoons, bro. It's always been like that. Remember when they told us what Earth looked like from the inside? They showed you the core when we were kids, and they'd be like, magma, the core, and all. How the f*** you know that, you don't even got an instrument that could go down there. So everybody was like, oh, this is what we think it is. And then they just make you think this is the shit they teach us, bro. It's the same reason why people got jabbed up and took all this shit because they were told that they, you know, we're, we're the ones that know what's going on. It's like, fuck you, bitch. You, you, a, you a dealer. You getting money. I'm not getting money. And that's the only reason I'm on this side. You know what I mean? So I might join the dark side. You never know, bitch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, bro, I'm sick of being a fucking customer. He's from the dark side. Um, I'm sick of being a customer, man. This is amazing. I don't even know what to tell you. I should have been promoting this right now instead of talking <laughs> about the moon and all this other <laughs> shit. Like, Talk cool. to me about Battle of the Bay, and then we're going to circle back to some other shit. That's the real conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, basically. Oh, f***ing Diz, you're a you're the best, Dick. So, hey. <laughs> go ahead. So basically, <laughs> I feel like you grew up watching Grind Time Battles. Of course. <laughs> I think you're from the era that you're from. I need to get some water for sure. This era. bastard disaster's a fucking jizz catcher. <laughs> That's the type of shit they used to say to me too. I freestyled that right now to you. Bars. That was the average bar back then. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fire bar back then. Are you kidding me, bro? That would have got reaction. Um, so basically, that era of us, the way we were doing shit, 
we started really blowing up from Oakland doing these Battle of the Bay events. These Battle of the Bay events made Battle Rap really popular because Facts. Battle Rap wasn't really... They had the, the World Rap Championships. The Rap Olympics had kind of... That had ended. Scribble Jam had ended. Mm -hmm. They had the World Rap Championships, and then that ended. So then what started was Grind Time. Grind Time started originally in Florida, but it was like a tiny thing, but they still got a lot of reaction off their first battle, which did really good. And it caused like a a motivation out there for them to have a scene. Like out here, we already had a scene. So once they developed their scene, Lush was actually working with them. And he, my bad, came out to, came out to, the, um, he came out to Florida and battled one of them. And then after it happened, they told him to do a West Coast division of that company. Uh -huh. When he did the West Coast division, he started it in Oakland because that's where he was staying. Uh -huh. So he did the Oakland thing. The Battle of the Bays started. And once those started, it changed battle rap forever. And then grind time fell apart. A lot of the battlers went on. They became A lot of them became King of the Dot rappers, URL rappers, and just so on so. Uh -huh. And kind of the idea of it died because the owners of it like kind of didn't agree with each other and they all had a falling out with each other and they fucking gave the shit away. Mm. So comes back years, I end up having a falling out with the league I was working with, you know what I mean? King of the Dot. You and had a falling out? We did. We're, I, we're absolutely on great terms right now, but at the time we did. Yeah. Um. So at the time I had, and when that happened, when the falling out happened, I did, I did kind of like, I lashed out on the internet and the viral. I was flipping out on them saying all this crazy shit, you know what I mean? Saying how they mistreated me and everybody was supporting me, you know what I'm saying? But after that, I kind of just backed off that and just, I got over the negative shit and I started thinking in a positive way. And I was just like, I want to build my own shit. And kind of the idea started there to bring our shit back. And then I acquired the logo and all that stuff, the trademarks. And once I did that, I kind of knew, like, look, I'm going to keep talking to these battlers, and I love all these battlers, these people that, like, were part of putting this shit on for us. They were instrumental in it, you know what I mean? They've been forgotten about because the shit been monopolized and it changed. The whole style changed. Uh -huh. So I'm going to bring them back. That's what I decided. And um, I came back with a bang. We came back with the Asesino battle, who was a champion of Mexico, and I felt like he would be the perfect fit for the beginning of the brand because he had an international style, and I felt like the Latino community was overlooked always in hip-hop. It's been, it's been this way, and it's like that in battle rap, too. You know, and I wanted to cause the bridge, but I didn't want to do it in a way where, oh, like the average and like american dude would do it like on some like me versus you i wanted it to be like a bridge the worlds to where like i rapped in spanish even though i don't speak spanish i understand it and i understand it a little and i have friends that completely speak it and understand it and i have family members that do so he asesino doesn't speak english but he understands it and everyone around him does too and they understand it so we both had enough support and help with us to to uh, absolutely be able to step into this different realm where I battled him in Spanish and he battled me in English and we both went back and forth obviously and that was kind of the biggest thing ever Red Bull hit us up they contacted us to sponsor it because it was like such a big thing they they realized and it, it went crazy it went viral in all like 22 um, Spanish speaking countries around the world you know what I mean I went to Barcelona in the summer last summer bro people were running up on me in the street Asesino disaster oh <laughs> fuck like people were fucking tripping bro and it's Barcelona, bro. He was walking around in the street, like people were running into me saying saying they watched the battle. So like it was like a really crazy thing. And it did what I wanted to do because it was the the our 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 culture, what it really represented was different from this street culture today and this gun bar culture is that we <laughs> our shit was like very versatile and open to different cultures and different um ideas, styles, and people with different experiences and like you know <clears throat> that worked out really good for us, but I still didn't bring back all the people that I wanted to and kind of we just been building it slow So this battle of the bay event So the battle of the bays happened like the main ones that happened They happened up to like five of them right on 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 grind time And then like another three happened on like king of the dot because oh, lush went over there too And they can't kind of came back to the bay and they used our rappers So it was kind of still like a battle of the bay But it was never really quite the actual feeling even though they did a good job on those events like king of the dot did That show was fire It was but they never Captured it captured it, you know, what I mean so like this right here is called Battle of the Bay X. So we kind of skipped to like it's it's mm -hmm. not 10 
it's not Battle of the Bay Ten. It's just no, a just whole new brand. Brand like it's just it's gonna be X one, X two after that, and all that. So like this first one is like a two day event where we're bringing all those guys back. Already the announcement is um, dumbfounded and satire, which Vicious. are two L A. Um, legends. legends. You know what I mean? Versus two legends from Queens and Harlem, uh, DNA and Charlie Clips, which is like a f huge ass battle in my opinion. Like this two on two is gonna be one of the biggest ones ever. You know what I mean? And then we have the other headliner on the on the, on the second day, which is Hollow the Dawn versus Thesaurus. Two other huge ones. Thesaurus is a Bay Area legend, and Hollow the Dawn, it's you know self-explanatory. He's definitely one of the biggest legends in this game, and you know he's had the big battle with Joe Budden. He's obviously broken through to the mainstream too, just like I have, which is very few people could actually say that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I battled Cannabis, I battled Cassidy, and you know we obviously I'm supposed to have battled Crooked Eye. Um, last December had a lot of problem with the investing we had like a huge well obviously we've by tying our deal into an NFT company bro we fell for the NFT shit we we did a lot of people I don't feel bad because people people I know lost millions too like I I've I've heard stories that made me be like all right you know like when you think you're having a bad day and someone comes and tells you like everyone he knows got shot you're just kind of like oh like you know I should just shut the up right now it was like kind of one of those like even though it was like 300 grand which is a lot of money yeah you know i mean there's people that lost like i had just seen justin bieber online bragging like 1.4 million bro like all the shit like they're just like <laughs> and like i was like oh man that guy just lost 1.4 oh f you know that's crazy that's life-changing buddy you know i don't know today in this america that's just like nothing what's the likelihood Fuck. of the crooked eye battle happening that's what i was gonna say the crooked eye battle is still locked in we just have to finalize the date and get the get the investor on deck like we we still got the whole structure of are it. you gonna use the same investor that you're using for this we're just kind of confused who's who's gonna go with it what deal we're gonna get and i don't want to approach crooked about it until it's like completely like i exactly know but it's still like we still got the okay from him where we're gonna do the battle and we've already like we put up bread already so so it's good yeah he's a he's he to be honest with you if he wasn't such a real ass he's a great be. guy it wouldn't be if he wasn't you know what I mean? like, so yeah like he he's very understanding he knows like we we got in a situation we was about to be on like he was about to be paid really f nice i was gonna get him his biggest paycheck he's ever got from these like nobody like trust me like it's a huge payout bro yeah you know i mean so like to rap for fucking nine minutes <laughs> you know what i mean it's amazing yeah be telling people like industry rappers be thinking like you know like okay like you got all this shit and like you floss and you got millions in your bank account we don't got millions yet but the thing is about us is we don't got to work as hard as you bro Fact. you know you got to go on tour bro you got to bust your ass you got to do all this and some of you are not going to clear 20 at the end of it 30 40 or 50 grand might come back home with 10 or 15 you know battle rappers are getting 50 right now to rap for nine minutes and go home <laughs> it's not the same mm -mm. you know you're, you're all right see you later but i mean a lot of work goes into it but you're at home while you're doing it what are the, what are <laughs> you know the dates what for battle of the bay august 12 and 13 this whole card is packed insane like when I say the whole entire card is crazy, this is probably, like I don't like putting it out there because it sounds corny. Like everybody says this, the biggest card of the year, but it's actually, most likely the biggest card of the year. Actually. Yes. I'm just going to say most likely. So I'm a little humble about it. Yo, it's most likely, you know, now that you said that shit, probably wasn't going to go, but I'm there buckaroo. Oh, no, you got to be up there, man. We're I, there. Every, everybody going to pull up to this. Shit. Man, we're going to have yeah, a lot we, of legends in the building. You know, a lot of Bay Area legends going to be there, man. This shit is going to be swarming with real motherfuckers, man. And, you know, we got OTR Records. You know, they they helping us da daily slaps. They they really putting this shit together for us, too, man. Like, they they really, you know, coming through on their end. And, uh, like, we just got a solid team. We got solid guys with us. We got a solid roster. We got... Eh. Ain't shit going to go wrong unless the economy crash again. I'm going to be really... Cause they, 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 bro, we was about to be on. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know what's crazy? We've had shit get up so many times, and it's always my fault. It's probably because I call myself disaster. Should I end up in these disastrous situations? But I, when we locked this deal in, I was like, yes, there's nothing I could do to this up. 
like, there's nothing, there's nothing anybody can do anymore. The deal is locked in. I can't, I can't piss no one off now. I can't do nothing. We're about to get this money. Nothing can stop it. And then boom, the economy folds. I'm like, God damn it. It's like an earthquake or some shit. You can't control it. This shit just. So if it happens again, I'm I'm probably just going to go into my war thing. Like, you know, like the conspiracy theorist thing. I'm just going to go put on my shit and just go out there and just. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I'm just going to be a. <laughs> I'm just going to become a war guy. I like it. Yeah, just go out there into the hills. Before we get you to the clock <laughs> out right here, let me ask you a couple of basic questions. Who do you think has defeated you in a battle? That's a good question. Pat Stay. R.I.P. Legend. R.I.P. Pat. Pat got me. Pat. Michael Jordan, me though. He like. You know, Michael Jordan used to take all the players out to eat and like make them feel really good. <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> Pat Michael Jordan, the shit out of me. He's such a real dude. And he was so cool to me before the battle. We ran into each other by accident. We wasn't even supposed to hang out. We ended up cutting our hair together. We ended up at the same barber shop. Fucking shit. Small ass city, man. Shouts out to Toronto. You must be small, though. God damn it. The six mm -hmm. is small as hell, bro. I went over there, bro. One barber shop. I was cutting my hair in Pat's sitting right next to me. I'm like, God damn. We battling in like two days. We battling in like a day. I'm cutting our hair in the same place. Started chopping it up with him, and I had a bunch of shit that I wanted to say to him. That was like super low, below the belt, and I'm glad to god i never said it because that wouldn't be on record you know what i mean That's and i had nice. some crazy shit i was gonna say to him i'm like i'm changing this whole round and i changed my whole f round before the battle and he ate my shit up because i did that because my th it just couldn't hold up to how good his shit was written and how how well he was memorized for it and he like a lot of people still have my back in that battle even say that i won but i don't feel like i won just because he was just so so calm and calculated and I, I just give him the win off like him knowing he was going to win <laughs> you know what i mean like he acted like he knew there was nothing i could do like i came to his backyard they wanted him to have the chain like they wanted him the champion of canada i knew there was i would have to do a miracle to beat him and i didn't have a miracle on me you know what i mean so i just knew what it was and he probably sensed it so he treated me like that he treated me like he knew he was gonna win the battle bro and it was crazy but people still love my verses and it's some of my craziest writing it just didn't come out like as good as it should have you know what i mean anyone else besides pat that you think got you i feel like i feel like i feel like i might have lost a serious jones battle too like that's my battle ever cat. it's my shittiest I'm battle ever I, I literally was horrible in that battle i hate it I was garbage. I was garbage in that battle. I don't even care if, if somebody says that. I'll agree with them, bro. I, I can't even watch it. I did some stupid shit. I wasn't even, I was like in a good mood and I was just battling off like the strength of being happy and I wasn't even that ready. <laughs> and then like on top of not being ready, some dude called me before the f battle. He's like, oh, bro, I f this guy's bitch here. Check out the pictures. And he started showing me these pictures of his, him and his bitch. And he was like, let me come up on stage with you and all this shit. I was like, yeah, come on stage with me. I bring this idiot on stage with me and he comes up there and Sears Jones sees him and starts laughing and then head ice comes in and they punk him like it was like it was like oh I was like god damn like he, he just didn't work like they didn't really care what he was talking about and then like I I seen him after that he just faded out so I just it was a mistake I made believing this guy you know before the battle no, he never, probably smashed the never do that again if somebody ever comes to me before a battle again and like I thought of it as a funny thing. I didn't even want it to be personal. The whole battle, I'm not really saying personal shit to him, but I thought like that would be like a funny ass thing. Like since you claim you the woman, man, like that's why. If it was anything, anything other than that, I would not have got them there. Like if it was a homie that he fucked over or somebody like, yeah, I got your man's with me right here. I wouldn't have did nothing like that, you know. But it was like you're the you're the ladies guy, you know what I mean? And this dude claiming he your bitch this a perfect angle you know like hey you ain't really with the you know it turned out to be some silly shit and i just hate that and then on top of that i started getting all irritated because he kept talking over my shit oh yeah you and doing all this shit. weird shit so i started poking him in his chest and then he felt it like the third time i really put that shit in there i was just like mm. and then he just stepped back and he's like what's up like <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we almost threw hands right there. And the crazy part is that was after the math fight. So I had already fought the dude that fired on him. I fired on the dude that fired on him. And then me and him battling. And you want to get into a fight with me? Like, you should be thanking me. I'm supposed to be your homie. Like, that's how I was looking at it. I even said it in the battle. I was like, man, I punched the dude that punched you. You should be saying I love you. Come here. Let me hug you. You know, <laughs> that type of shit. But, you know, that was, I, I sucked in that battle, bro. I sucked in that one. I, I, my Cassidy shit got f***ed up because on the first day on the stage, I was cooking his ass and he couldn't even take it. Like the footage is still there. You watch round one versus me and Cassidy on the, on the in, in front of the crowd. Vicious. He got baked. He got burned into a crisp. And then we moved it into this room the next morning and I had Why to reformat my round. I had, to, I had to come up with a new round. This guy writes forever because he has those mixtape type of bars. And shouts out to Cassidy. I'm not dissing him right now, but like, Cass has, and, and they're fire bars, but they're mixtape bars. So he could write like a million of them. Like he could, he could just go forever. You know, I'm memorizing all this different crazy ass shit. And I have these angles and setups and different things that I'm doing. And he just. Well, what are mixtape bars? Like he just does they're like. just generalized. He does like a lot of general shit that's like easy to like memorize. And like he could string it along for a long time. And then he could freestyle without you noticing. Like he could, like, it's like a template. He has a template and he does it with his music thing and it's fire with the music thing, but with the battle rap shit, it hasn't worked as much. Mm. It, he's, but he, he kind of started fine tuning it. It's just when he, when you hear it on beat, it's insanely good. You know what I mean? It's, it, I feel like he's one of the best ever at that. Like when he's Kaz on beat is probably, probably the best rapper to ever like translate punches, like translate battle rap to, to music. Like, like there's battlers that can make music, but once they go into the music state, what I'm saying is they start rapping different. Cass is still a battle rapper navigating through the music. I want to say Jada, bro, and he's I fucking say, like, amazing. Jada, kisses Jada, up that lane. Jada still is less punchy as him and less complex as Cass. You I know guess what that's mean? a valid point. Fuck it. Like I don't know about less complex because Jada got some complex shit too, but like Cass does the inside bars and outside. Like he's, you know, you you see he has a formula. You know what I mean? And like. Anyways, I, I hated my second and third round in, in, in that battle, but my first round was fire as fuck. I feel like I, I bodied him in that round, but I don't like my second and third in that shit. There's a lot of performances I don't like, bro. I have over like 120 performances in, in, in on camera only. Like That's one of the few people in the world that has that. You Who's your mean? top five? I can't tell you. I need you to. There's no way. You can't leave here. Bro, it's... Do changes every time i can't even fucking who's a constant in your top people well always it's always gonna be pat bro and i'm not saying that because he passed away like it's always gonna be pat it's always been pat so it's always gonna be pat i just don't feel like anybody could ever impress me like that like the way he did I'm and then there's 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 definitely the source there's that's um, a bad dude yeah the source is like one of my favorite battlers ever um it's tough, bro, because I, I I like a lot of them beyond that. Like, beyond that, it becomes really fuzzy, like, between, like, Hollow, Ilmac. There's a bunch of guys, you know what I mean? Um, Lux, Arsenal. I don't, I, I don't know who my who my top five would be, like, really. And, like, now, that's crazy. There's people like Twerk and Jersey Twerk and Big K and... Big K's a... K Dude. Shine is one of my favorite battlers. Like these are some of my favorite battlers ever. I'll put them in the top five any day. So I don't know who to remove and not to put. You I'm know not mad mean? at that. I'm not mad at that. Yeah, like, like these are like my favorite battlers. Like Ace Amin is another guy that I really f love. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of f dope battlers, bro. I'm gonna forget tons of them. But like people that really impress the f and I always look for them. Those, those are some of them. You know what I mean? Rum Nitty. <laughs> He's pretty bad. Rum Nitty just comes up with with certain bars sometimes where you're like, oh yeah, nobody could have thought of that. I love that. I like it. Yeah. Is there anything you want to leave the people with before you clock out? Yeah, man. We need to we need to get everybody to fuck tag this B O T B X shit, man. F um, B O T B X. Hit, hit, yeah, and um, hit up the G T X Battles Instagram or Mister Disaster Instagram. You spell my name with a Z. I got the flyer and all the shit right there, and you can hit up www.gtxbattles.com too. Get your tickets. We sell the physical tickets right now in Oakland, August 12 and 13. There's general admission and VIPs, um, and there's deals for both days together. 
uh, we're going to pay-per-view it. We're going to do video on demand. So you're going to be able to watch the event live and stream it. And after it's done, you're going to be able to get it on demand, video on demand later on for the next couple of weeks. So, oh. you know, this is going to be a big moment for us. Um, you know, I just want everybody to know we put in a lot of work into this shit. And, you know, um, we're going to do more of these. We want to be able to fucking consistently, you know, come back with another follow-up. You know what I mean? So... We need everybody to support, you know what I mean? Because it's more the artists independently doing it and we kind of going up against machines. And if the fans ain't going to be able to help us, we're not going to be able to beat the machine. And we're going to be the ones that are give the fans what they want because we don't operate like a business. We well, we operate as a business, but we think of the fucking content and culture first. We don't, we're not sellouts. We'll never be sellouts. You know what I'm saying? We're always going to be rooted into our shit. We're always nice. going to be respected by the streets and we're always going to be respected by the culture. And we're not going to do anything to fucking hinder or waver away from that. You know what I'm saying? So y'all support will be fucking much appreciated on this. You know what I'm saying? Anything, you know what I mean? Even a share, you ain't got to buy the pay-per-view or get a ticket, man. Just a share, a like, you know what I mean? Maybe a share, man. A, share, a like a is not enough. Yeah, share. I'm, I'm going to need you to hit that share button. <laughs> I'm going to need you to hit the share button when you see it. And on uh, on Twitter, at Disaster Banned, because they banned my first fucking account. Because <laughs> I was talking some shit. I lost fucking 90,000 followers. Fucking c***ers. <laughs> <laughs> they gotcha. <laughs> All right, can we... Can we agree that maybe you'll come back up and do some more conspiracy sessions you like that shit huh you I that's the shit that. that you want to hear man we like we really like we really engulfed the f out of this fucking are you coming back this. yes or no yes dog. yes i i want to talk about it more too man you know i do man but just i'm Cat. just not but we're i don't want to wake everybody up man it's, it's 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 not for everybody man people are not supposed to know this shit they're supposed to find it they're they'll not find, supposed to be told it they'll find it here with you brother that's a good way to think about it. <laughs> you like that? I got angles too, G. Yeah, I'm just not trying to get banned again and get you banned, get your whole fucking channel shut down, get your algorithm played with. No. We gonna f*** up shit. You say that, I already said some shit that's enough to piss some people off. You know what I mean? If I start naming certain companies, boy, your shit gonna get fuck up out of here. They gonna remove your I will bleep them there out. There's certain companies, though, that you know is crazy. There's certain words that I will never mention in my life. You know how they say, speak no evil, hear no evil? <laughs> They are names because I know who runs the world. I'll never, I'll never say their name, and I'll never tell anyone on camera. I, I know, I know who the fuck they are. Like I know exactly what companies are in charge of everything the fuck that's going on. We need to get you out of here, sir. We definitely <laughs> enjoy your algorithm. I'm just not gonna mention them ever. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. We highly oh appreciate God. you and your gold status gracing this platform. Thank this you. has oh. been another episode of the Food Community Podcast. We got disaster, rich homie Space Kwan. Foods. And LA icon. Shout out to all the space fools. <laughs> space Run it up. Fools, Gracias. <laughs> these fools.